Hi everyone, it's Professor Pemberton. In this video we're going to talk about simplifying expressions. So what we're going to see over the next few sections is that the first step in solving an equation is to simplify both sides of the equal sign, the left side and the right side of the equals. So to be able to do that we need to understand what are variable expressions. And first part of the section we're going to practice simplifying expressions by combining what's called similar or more commonly called like terms. So a term in math is a number and one or more variables multiplied together. So what we're going to learn in this video is how to simplify expressions by combining similar terms, how to simplify expressions involving parentheses, and then also to be able to calculate the value of an expression for a given value of a variable. So let's start with combining similar or combining like terms. So an expression is a number and or a variable combined with some mathematical operation or operations used to represent an unknown number. So here's some examples of, of terms. So you have negative 7y, so you have a number that's being multiplied by a variable, and this is what's called one term, a one term expression. Okay, the next one, x plus 7. So you have a variable that's being combined with a number with a mathematical operation of, the, of addition. And this one has two terms. So you have x, that's one term, and 7 is another term, and they're joined together with addition. Okay, same for the third expression. 2t subtract 9. So the terms are 2t and negative 9, and they're being combined with subtraction this time. So two terms again. And then the last expression is 4 times s times t. So you have two different variables this time. Subtract 1 fourth s. Well, even though you have several variables, you still only have two terms. 4 times s times t is one term, and negative 1 fourth s is the other term. So you have two terms again. So notice that in these expressions, the terms are being added or subtracted to form the entire expression. So you have variables x, we had a variable t, and we also had variables y, s, and t. So the variables can be anything, and you can have as many variables as you would like. But what's being important is that each term is being separated by addition or subtraction. So let's go with the definition of similar or like terms. So two terms with the same variable, part, which means you have the same variables, and the variables are raised to the same power to be like or similar terms. So if you have a term that's like 3x and you have another term that's 4x, notice that they both have x in the term and both x's are raised to the first power. It's x to the first power. Even though there's no exponent there, it's assumed to be a 1. So likewise, the terms 18y and negative 10y, these are like terms. So you have a number that's being joined with a variable, so you get 18y, that's one term, and then negative 10y. So they both have y, and only y, and it's y to the first power in both terms. Same thing as 3x to the second power, and negative 4x to the second power. So notice that they both have x, and both x's are raised to the second power. So those will also be like terms. To be able to simplify an algebraic expression, we need to reduce the number of terms in the expression, if possible. So to be able to do this, we're going to apply the distributive property, along with our knowledge of addition and subtraction of positive and negative numbers from previous videos. So let's start with example one. So example one says, combining similar terms or combining like terms, simplify each of the following expressions by combining similar terms. So number one, negative five x plus two x. Notice that both terms are like or similar terms because they both have x raised to the first power. And now that means we can use the distributive property to simplify. So you can rewrite this as you have negative 5 plus 2 of x. So notice that if you took x and distributed it through the parentheses, you would get the original expression that we started off with. So now let's simplify what's inside the parentheses. You have negative 5 plus 2, that is negative 3, and you keep the x. So in other words, negative 5x plus 2x is negative 3x's. Okay, number 2. This time there's three terms. You have 12a as one term, negative 7a is the second term, and 4a is the third term. They're all like terms because they all have a, 
and they all have a raised to the first power. So you can use the distributive property to take 12, subtract 7, plus 4, and that's all multiplied by the variable a. So let's simplify now. 12 subtract 7 is 5. 5 plus 4 is 9. So this would give you 9a. So notice that we are simplifying the expression because we start off with three terms and now we simplify to just have a single term, which is the equivalent. So number three, you have 2x plus 6 plus 3x subtract 5. So there are four terms here, 2x, 6, 3x, and negative 5. Keep in mind, you can only combine like or similar terms. So let's group the 2x and the 3x together using the distributive property. So you have 2 plus 3, and that's the x terms. So you had 2x's and 3x's. And now just the constant terms, so just the real numbers by themselves, no variable attached, they are 6 and negative 5. You can't combine 2x and 6 together, or 3x and 6, because they don't have, one has an x and the other one does not. The like terms must have a variable, the same variable, and the variable must be raised to the same power. So we have 6 minus 5 is the other two terms. So we have 5x plus 1, after you simplify completely. All right, number 4. This one also has four terms. 8a subtract 2b subtract 4a plus 5b. So again, notice that you can combine like terms only if you have the same variable raised to the same power. So let's group the a terms, so the terms that have a in them, and we also will group the terms that have b. So you have 8 subtract 4 of the terms that have a, and then plus you have negative 2 for the b term, and you have a 5 for the other term that has a b. So those are negative 2 times 5 in parentheses times b. And now let's simplify what's inside the parentheses. You have 8 minus 4, which is 4a, and negative 2 plus 5 is 3b. So this would simplify to 4a plus 3b. Number 5, so you have two terms with x. You have 5x and a minus 1x. And you have two terms with a y, negative 1 half y minus 3 halves y, or negative 3 divided by 2y. So again, let's group the terms that have x's. So you have 5, subtract, even though there's not a number in front of the x, it's assumed to be a 1. So subtract 1, and those are the x terms, plus, now group the y terms. You have minus 1 half and a minus 3 halves. And those are the y terms. So now let's simplify what's inside of the parentheses again. 5 minus 1 is 4, so you have 4 x's. And then negative a half minus 3 halves gives you negative 4 halves. So negative 4 divided by 2, y. And negative 4 divided by 2 can simplify further to give you 4x subtract 2y. And so we took originally had four terms, and it simplifies to have two terms. Now be very careful with these problems that have more than one variable. They must be the same variable to, be, to combine them, and they must have the same variable raised to the same power to combine them. So this one has an x, this term has a y, they're unlike terms or unsimilar terms. So notice that in each of these last five problems, if you have fewer terms than the original expression, then you have simplified the expression. Simplified. Okay, so let's move on to simplifying expressions involving parentheses. So we're going to use what we learned in the previous section. So if an expression contains parentheses, it is often necessary to apply the distributive property to remove any parentheses or grouping symbols before you start combining like or similar terms. So let's try that with example two. Simplify expressions with parentheses. Simplify each of the following expressions using the distributive property. So again, notice that you must use the order of operations correctly as you are using the distributive property. So five minus two, you cannot do Order of operation says I must multiply negative 2, so take the sign with the number, multiply the negative 2 through the sum, and that's what the distributive property was used for. So we're going to take negative 2 and distribute to 4y and 1. So this would be 5 minus 2 times 4y plus negative 2 times 1. And now let's multiply. So you have 5 subtract 8y 
and then negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, so minus 2. And now we can combine like terms. So there's only one term with a variable, so it will stay negative 8y, since it's the only term like it. But the other two terms, 5 and minus 2, they are like terms. They're just real numbers with no variables. So if you combine 5 subtract 2, you get 3. So negative 8y plus 3. That would be the simplified expression for number 1. Okay, number 2. This time we have two sets of parentheses. You have 6 times x minus 3. Subtract the quantity 7x plus 2 in parentheses. So we're going to have to use the distributive property twice. You have 6 times x and 6 times negative 3 for the first set of parentheses. So 6 times x minus 6 times 3. And now the second set of parentheses. Notice that there's a negative in front of the second set of parentheses. It's really a negative 1 times the second set of parentheses. So we're going to take negative 1 times 7x and negative 1 times 2. Always make sure you distribute the negative 1 to both terms in the parentheses. So negative 7x would be negative 1 times 7x, and negative 1 times 2 would give you negative 2, so minus 2. So let's simplify the multiplications. So we have 6x minus 18, subtract 7x, subtract 2. So we have 6x minus 7x. Let's do what we did in the last couple problems. So we had 6 minus 7 of the x terms, and then we have the the constant terms, or just the real numbers, you have negative 18 minus 2. So group those together. So 6 minus 7 is negative 1. So negative 1x, or just negative x. So the 1 is assumed, so negative 1x. And then the other terms would be negative 18 minus 2 gives you negative 20. So negative x minus 20. Okay, number 3. Same idea as the last problem. You have two sets of parentheses, and there's a constant on the outside, a real number, multiplied to both sets of parentheses. So you have to use the distributive property twice. Negative 4 times 2x, and negative 4 times negative 3y, and negative 2 times negative 5x, and negative 2 times negative 6. So this is what we would get after we distribute. You have negative 4 times 2x, negative 4 times negative 3y, negative 2 times negative 5x, negative 2 times negative 6. So make sure you have all four multiplications after the distributive property. Simplify the multiplications. So you have negative 4 times 2x, that's negative 8x. Negative 4 times negative 3y gives you positive 12y. Negative 2 times negative 5x gives you positive 10x, because you're multiplying two negatives together, gives you a positive. And negative 2 times negative 6 gives you positive 12. So now we're back to a problem like we were looking at in example 1. Combine any like terms. Well, we have an x term and another x term, so group those together. Negative 8 plus 10 x's. It looks like we only have one term with a y in it, so it will just be 12y. And it looks like there's only one term that has just a real number, and it's just 12. So it will stay plus 12. So simplifying the x terms, negative 8 plus 10 gives you 2x's plus 12y plus 12. And that would be the simplified expression for number 3. Now you might be wondering, does it matter what order I put my answer in? No. We learned in the previous video the commutative property for addition. The sum can be in any order. So if you want to put 12y first, then 2x, and then 12, that's perfectly fine. That's a correct answer. Typically, you put your variable terms first, and then the constant term or the real numbers will always go at the last. So one thing to be very careful about when you use the distributive property is that if you have a negative out in front of the parentheses, like we talked about before, if you have a negative sign out in front of the parentheses, you need to make sure that you distribute to both terms. So if you have a negative on the outside of the parentheses, multiply by a plus b inside the parentheses, you have a negative 1 outside the parentheses, like I said before. It's negative 1 times a, which will give you negative a. And then negative 1 times b would be negative b. So what happens when you distribute a negative? It was positive a. When you distribute the negative, it becomes negative a. If you distribute the negative to the b, it was positive, and now it's negative. So distributing a negative through a parentheses will change all the signs.
It became negative and it became negative with both terms. So a negative sign outside the parentheses, when you are using distributive property, ends up changing the sign of each term within the parentheses. So in other words, you can say the opposite of a sum is the sum of the opposites. Okay, the last thing we're going to look at in this video is the value of an expression. How do you find the value of an expression when you are given the value of the variables? So recall that in expression 3x plus 2, this is having two terms, and we know that you can find the value of this expression if you know the value of x. So x can be any real number. If they tell us the number x is, we can plug it in inside this 3x plus 2 and find out the value of the expression. So say x equals 4. Just for example, if you take 3x plus 2, take all the x's in the expression and replace them with a 4 in parentheses. It's very important whenever you substitute something in in math, you always put it in parentheses. So 3 times x becomes 3 times 4, because x is 4, plus 2 is outside the parentheses. And then we can simplify. 3 times 4 is 12, plus 2 gives me 14. So that expression is 14 when x equals 4. So now let's say you have x equals negative 8. You have the same expression, 3x plus 2, but x equals negative 8. If you replace the x with a negative 8 in parentheses again, so 3 times negative 8 will give you negative 24, and then you also have to add 2, which is outside the parentheses. Negative 24 plus 2 will give you negative 22. So notice that the value of the expression will change if the value of x will change. So in the next example, we're going to find the value of an expression by replacing the variable with a value and make sure you substitute it or replace it in parentheses. So example three, evaluating an expression at a given value. Find the value of the following expressions by replacing the variable with the given number. So the expression is 3x minus 1, and the variable they're telling us is x equals 2. Okay, so we're going to find the value of the expression. So the value would be 3x minus 1 is the original expression. We are replacing the x with a 2, so we will replace it inside the parentheses. So 3 times 2 minus 1, and 3 times 2 is 6 minus 1 will give us 5. So the value of the expression is 5 when x equals 2. Okay, number 2. The expression this time is negative 7a plus 4, and a is negative 3. So again, the value, we start off with negative 7a plus 4. We replace the a with a negative 3 in parentheses. So negative 7 times negative 3 plus 4. Negative 7 times negative 3 is 21, positive 21, plus 4, which will give us 25. So the value is 25 when a is negative 3. Okay, next one. You have 2x minus 3 plus 4x, and the value of the variable is x equals negative 1. So the value. Sometimes it might be helpful to simplify the expression before you plug in the value of x. So notice that there are three terms with this expression, but 2x and 4x are like or similar terms. So we can combine those. 2x and 4x is really 6x minus 3. There is no other term that's just a real number, so it just stays minus 3. And now we can substitute in negative 1 and for x. So this gives us 6 times negative 1 minus 3. 6 times negative 1 is negative 6. Minus 3 will give us negative 9. So the value is negative 9 when x equals negative 1. Okay? And then number 4, you have a squared expression. You have y to the second power minus 6 times y plus 9. And the value of the variable is y equals negative 4 in this fourth problem. So find the value again. So rewrite the original expression, y squared minus 6y plus 9. We're replacing the y in parentheses with a negative 4 in parentheses. So negative 4 squared minus 6 times negative 4 plus 9. Negative 4 squared, that's negative 4 times negative 4. That will be positive 16. Negative 6 times negative 4 is positive 24 plus 9, which will be 49 after you add. So the value is 49 when y equals negative 4 for this expression. Now, you might be wondering, in number 3, we combined like terms or similar terms before we plugged in x equals negative 1. Does that impact whether if I just plugged in negative 1 directly in for both x's and then just simplified from there? It doesn't matter. So if you simplify an expression first, or if you don't, the value of the expression after the variable is replaced will not change. 
So you can simplify and then plug in the value, or you can plug in the value and then simplify. Either way, the answer will remain the same. So example four, find the value of the following expressions by replacing the variables. So this time we'll have multiple variables to replace with the given numbers. So number one, the expression is 2x minus 3y plus 4. The variables are x equals negative 5 and y equals 6. So let's find the value. The value would be 2x minus 3y plus 4. Now replace the x, again in parentheses, with negative 5. The y is replaced with a 6 in parentheses. So 3 times y, which is 6, and then plus 4. So now perform the multiplications. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. Negative 3 times 6 is negative 18 plus 4, which will simplify to negative 24. So that's the value when x is negative 5 and y equals 6. Okay. Number 2, you have the expression x squared subtract 2 times xy minus y squared. x is equal to 3 and y equals negative 4. So again, make sure that when you plug values in, they go in parentheses, especially when you have exponents involved. So you have x squared minus 2xy minus y squared. If we replace the x with a 3, it becomes 3 in parentheses squared minus 2 times x, which is a 3 in parentheses. And then you have a multiply by y also. So multiply by negative 4 in parentheses minus... And then you have a y that's replaced with negative 4 in parentheses, and it's squared. Okay, so now it's just like using order of operations. So let's make sure we do exponents first. 3 squared is 9, minus 2 times 3 times negative 4, minus negative 4 in parentheses squared is negative 4 times negative 4, which is positive 16. So that minus is here, and we got positive 16 as the answer there. So now we can do multiplication. So we have 9, 2 times 3 is 6, so minus 6 times negative 4, minus 16. And now one more multiplication. You have negative 6 times negative 4, which is positive 24. So 9 plus 24 minus 16, which will be 17. Okay, one more. Number 3, the expression is negative 11 minus 3x plus 2 times the quantity, x plus y in parentheses. x equals negative 3 and y equals negative 1. So both of the values are negative this time. So again, be very careful with your negatives. Negative 11 minus 3x plus 2 times the quantity, x plus y. Negative 11 stays negative 11 minus 3 times x. That's negative 3 now. So it goes in parentheses. Plus 2 parentheses, x again, so make sure you replace x with negative 3, and then a y replace with a negative 1, so plus negative 1, and then that parentheses is to close the original parentheses in the expression. Negative 11, we have to work out what's inside the grouping symbols first, so negative 3 times negative 3 will just stay as it is, plus 2 parentheses, negative 3 plus negative 1, that's negative 4, and so now we can do the multiplication because there's no exponents. Negative 11, negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. And then 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. So negative 11 plus 9 minus 8, negative 10. So the expression has a value of negative 10 when x is negative 3 and y equals negative 1. So this finishes up our discussion on simplifying expressions and also finding the value of an expression when you're given the value of the variable or variables. If you have any questions about any of the examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions about any of the homework problems for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about addition property of equality.